Okay, here's some pictures of a silver side. There's one. But they're long and skinny. Look at that little fella. Huh? Now that is a gorgeous little minnow. Now, what if we took and turned that into a 12 inch glide bait? I'm thinking we'd have ourselves a winner. That's what I'm thinking. So, let's get started. My goodness, I got doing a little more research. Dang. Look at the size of that silver side. It's a huge minnow. I mean, that sucker right there looks to be about 16 inches long. That's a dandy, huh? So now I don't feel so bad. So this is a legitimate th uh, thought I had here. Things are very thin. They've got a low profile. So I think it's going to be idea to create a nice big presence in the water without breaking your arm, throwing it. So, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Okay, got the uh, shape sketched up here based off some pictures on the internet. And uh, it's time to cut it out. Okay, been doing a little more research on the on the project and uh, the Pajeri minnow, which is basically like a giant silver side. The world record. Look at the size of that bad boy. It's like 30 inches. That's a that's a minnow. This thing is going to be kind of small at 11 inches. <laughs> I'm shooting for 12, but I think it's going to be around 11. That way, you know, you throw that thing all day without, you know, getting all shankered out. The old shoulder and elbow. You know how it is. Okay, got the stuff mainly sketched on here from here. Okay. Alright. I don't know if, uh, if that's too much light. I don't know. I don't know if those details are coming through. But anyway, got her pretty close, ready for some eyeballs. Okay. Fortunately, I already have a tail mold that I made years ago for um, for the skipjack lures that I make and uh, I'm going to show you how I make these I just use hot glue
but uh, I think it's looking pretty good. I mean, that's a nice big uh, silver side right there. Okay, so from there, and from there. Ready for the scale pattern.
and so on. Okay, so another really cool thing about <clears throat> using wood frames to build your molds for your lures is that this tells me how much rubber I'm going to need to do this project. And the reason that is, is or how that works, is that when I did the, um, you know, I seated the lure, the model, down into the clay, I actually did this side first. And I know it took this much clay to completely seat this lure so that it looks like this. Well, that's exactly how much rubber I'll need to do this side when I pour the rubber. It's this much. So I know I'm not going to be wasting rubber when I mix up too much or not have enough because I didn't mix up, you know, enough. So, really. Okay, I got ahead of myself again. I do that pretty often. Um, so, you know, I've got the lure seated in the clay. Well, I'm going to pull it back out because I forgot to put a couple eyelets in. I don't necessarily want to, you know, my, my first bait on this is going to be a glide bait. It's going to be a 11 in, well, it's 11 inches. And um, the goal is, you know, to make a big presence with little weight. So you can, you know, throw this thing and be a lot more subtle with it and be more finesse fishing with a big bait. So I don't really want my mold to be of a glide bait. I want this body. So my mold is going to be just for the body. But there are some eyelets, you know, I can put in that really don't matter. So, say for instance, I pick this body and I put a paddle tail on it. Well, it doesn't matter that the body's got some little eyelet holes. I don't have to put the eyelet in. When I fill it, I can just break that, you know, resin off that fills those eyelets. So, I'll go ahead and put the eyelets in and the mold. I've already put the one in the nose. You can see there. Um, and I've... I basically just got this thing, you know, it's just hanging there, but I can pull it right back out. I'm going to go ahead and put one in the belly. Um, I've already measured where my center line is. I've come back, found my belly hook location for a glide bait, and then I'll also have one marked for the tail, so I'll put one there as well for the tail section. But um, when I pour this, you know, I'll, I'll only put those in if I need to make a glide bait. If I don't need to make glide bait, of course, I'll just leave them out. Um, and then I can take a body, you know, and cut it into three, four segments, five segments, um, whatever I want to do, and create a nice different kind of swimming action. So that's why my game plan is, let's go. Something else I, I want to um, show you guys too that's really kind of critical for the way I do molds is, see those screws on the back? I actually added a piece of plywood and that holds the clay, you know, from falling through. Um, but I can pop that off when see the same piece here will be my mold frame for the rubber once I get this side poured I'll be able to flip this over take this off pull that clay out fill it with rubber put this back on and I'll have very little rubber used on a giant mold that's supported with wood and the screws are the locator pin so I can kinda open and close and I don't inject my molds I don't pour them um, into ports and stuff. I just basically, because I've got such a nice, flat, level, clean plane, I fill my bodies on each side of the mold, clear up to the surface, maybe just a tad more, and as that stuff starts to set, it's already kind of thick anyway, as it starts to set, I close the mold, and what squishes out creates a little bit of flashing, they call it, but it doesn't really hurt anything. Um, and who doesn't like a little flashing? Okay, so anyway, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get. I don't know why I said that. It just that ain't right. Uh, it's terrible. That was terrible. It was Charles Barkley would say, "That's terrible. That's terrible." Okay, so oh, something else I'm gonna show you guys too is. You know, when I get this thing in there, I'm really not exactly half. So why is because I'll leave these eyelets 
completely touching this surface but completely above that surface. And what that does is that puts my parting line on one side of the eyelid. But the reason I do that is because when I insert my eyelid into that rubber, it's completely engulfed. You know, it's just, just open on the side it's touching, you know, so you're, it holds your eyelets in place real well. Because sometimes I'll add weight to my eyelet. And if, that, if I do that and it's too much weight, I can make a little tiny staple out of wire and pin that eyelet in place too. So, but, you know, just another little tip about using mold bases and doing molds if you're going to do like, you know, you're going to pour 15 or 20 of these or maybe, maybe 100 of them. I don't know. You're not going to get 100 out of one pour of rubber, but you might get 40 or 50. And who knows? Some guys might be getting that. I don't know, but I'm not. I get about 50 pours and the rubber starts going bad. If I'm lucky, I get 50. And I treat my mold, my mold good. Use a lot of mold release. So, all right, let's get started. Okay, we're ready to... Uh, mix up some rubber and pour the mold. Now, um, as I mentioned earlier, this is the amount of clay it took to bury half of the lure. So it's, this is the amount of rubber it'll take to fill this in. And that's a pretty cool trick because I can look at here and I can say, well, okay, if I fill my rubber to somewhere about right in there, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to have enough to uh, fill this mold in. And you're probably saying to yourself, gosh, it's so thin right in there. And it is pretty thin right in there. It's not, you know, it's going to be like a quarter inch thick. But the only uh, drawback to that is, is it's so flimsy that you don't get good support. So what I do is when the rubber is still wet, I'll take another board and I'll clamp it over top of it. I'll let that cure and then I'll take this off. And that what that does is allow me to access this rubber. When I'm taking a part out, I can just push on the rubber and pop the part out. So there's a lot of pros to doing it this way. I don't, you know, I know there's hundreds of ways of doing it and a lot of guys don't want to mess with jigsaws and cutting stuff. But if you're going to make more than one, man, this is, this is tough to beat because you can use this mold frame over and over again. In fact, I'm going to do a video and show you guys how you can actually make a master model where you can pour both sides at the same time. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of uh, you, you get excited, you got a lure, and you, you're going to pour the rubber. Well, then you got to wait all night for it to set up, and then you pour the other half, and then you got to wait all night for it to set up. So it's two days later before you can actually get a part out. Well, I'm going to show you how I can do it. And actually, I've got um, uh, parts out of rubber molds in as quick as four hours. And I'll show you how I do that sometime. But uh, for now, let's just mix up some rubber. Right at 11 inches, so the center line is going to be five and a half. Right there. So we catch some scales right through there.
Okay, well, you didn't get to see me paint this. I thought I had the camera on. Apparently I didn't. I don't have the footage of me painting this. So you just have to trust me. A little tackle magic went into it and we got her painted. Buddy's pond is somewhat clear enough, he said. You know, we had a lot of rain. It's muddy everywhere. But he said his pond's not in too bad a shape. So we're gonna go try to get some footage of this. Um, I'll try later at a later date when things clear up a little bit to get some more clear footage. But um, we'll go see what we can do. We'll go see if we can't go to the pond and give this thing a test and uh, see what kind of action it's going to have. So uh, let's go. Try one more time. Silver side, they call it. It's a uh, 11 inch glide bait, and uh, look at that real thin profile, light, easy to throw. I've got it set up where it's an extreme slow sinker, so I get a nice wake when I work it across the surface. Real happy with it. Can't wait to throw it this spring. 